In this video, I will show you how we improve the integration between APM and Azure AD in version 16.0. In my previous video, I presented how to connect APM with Azure AD in less than five minutes. I had to connect to Azure AD, I had to create an enterprise application in Azure AD, and I had to export the metadata from Azure AD and import the metadata in, in my APM manually. Now in 16.0, is done automatically by APM. APM will make all the API calls to Azure AD in order to create this application. So an application is not a web application. Okay, an application in Azure AD is a connector, and this application will allow me to use APM as a service provider and Azure AD as an entity provider, just with few clicks. So let's do it. So first of all, what we need before starting the deployment, we need to create an account in Azure AD. And in Azure AD, a service account is named an application. Not enterprise application, but app registration, application registration. So, we, you have to create an, app, an application here, okay? So as you can see, I have mine here. This is the one I'm gonna use for the demo, but let me show you what you have to do first. So you click on new registration, you give a name, test demo two, two sorry. Click register and you can notice a client ID copies is a client ID and keep it somewhere a tenant copy keep it go to certificate and secret and create a secret okay never one year expiration we don't care click add copy and keep it be careful you can copy it only one time later in later on when you go to another menu you can't copy this value anymore and the last step is to grant permission. So you have to provide permission for this app. So you have to grant permission for APM to create an application, to grant access to, uh, to users and so on and generate insertion, blah, blah, blah. So to know which permission we need, in, in uh, the guided configuration version 7.0, coming with 16.0, you have a new template, Azure AD application. You click on it. And then on the right side, on the first page, you see the permission you have to grant. Okay, so you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight permissions. So you have to click on Add Permissions, Microsoft Graph, and Application Permissions. And you search for these permissions. So for instance, Application, Read, Write, All. Application, Read, Write, All and so on okay so you grant access to the right permit to the right uh, api actually and at the end when it's done you click on grand admin consent and yes and you are good that's it okay this is what you have to do so i have already created an application a service application this one so i will i will delete this one i don't need it anymore for the demo. Okay, so delete this one, delete this one. And this is my service application. Okay, so I have a client ID, tenant ID, and I have a secret somewhere. I keep it secret. So let's start. So configuration name will be a, a UDF AD. Okay, UDF is my, my demo. You can see I can enable single sign-on if I want, endpoint check as well. My tenant ID, tenant ID is here. My client ID, client ID. This is not secret actually, okay? So that's why I share it with you. The client secret is secret. So I have my, my secret on the other screen and I passed it. Then click test connection. I have, okay, so I have a connectivity with Azure ID. It means my free values are right, so at the moment, APM will be able to read and write things in Azure AD. Here, I have the choice to reuse an existing application, integration, if I have one. You can see I don't have one. Or create a new one. I create a new one, okay? So create a new application, create a new connector with Azure AD. Next, the host. In my demo, SP, size provider, itc.demo, uh, I don't need encrypted insertion. I don't care. It's a demo. 
And then this is the Azure ID uh, application. And I want to use this one. As you can see, we have a new application. In the near future, we're going to have one, two, three more. Okay. So I want to use the Azure AD APM integration application. So there is, you can see a name and I need to select the key. This is a SAML signing key. So it's, it's a key that I have on, on my big IP. I will use ITC key and certificate. Fast phrase. I need to give a fast phrase. Okay. If you, if you read the, the doc here, it explains you why so in case you want to export it, you need a, you need a fast phrase. The so signing summer session in SHA 256. Here I can do more uh, control, but at the moment I don't care. I continue. An IP for the virtual server. Redirect if I want to redirect or not the port 80 and my SSL profile. So of course I created in advance an SSL profile. Click next. A pool, so I have a pool, is this one, 20.8, it's an Nginx server. Click next, some setting for the sessions. And we're good and we can deploy. At this moment, APM is contacting, is calling Azure AD with my application service credentials, the client secret, client ID, and is creating all the objects. The object are application, enterprise application. So he create the application, he push the certificate and the key, he download the metadata, and for the metadata, he's creating all the object for a SAML authentication on APM side. So it's it's done, okay, as you can see. It's deployed. So if I get back here, if I go to my to my Azure AD and I go to my enterprise application. I can see my UDF AAD enterprise application. So now my APM is connected to Azure AD. I just have to do one more step in this app. You have to allow users. That's it. Okay. So as you can see, everything is set. The single sign on is set with a service provider, sp.it.demo with my key, with everything is here. I don't have to do anything more. I just have to tell which user is allowed to use this application. This is by default. This is by design in Azure AD. So I will allow myself. I have only one user in this tenant. Okay. So of course you don't select users, you select group. So now I'm good. I'm finished. Okay. So my, my big IP is connected to Azure AD and I just deploy a template. So here, If I try to go to my, if I try to go to my big IP, I arrive here. So I will use a, an incognito window. Okay. Just to be sure that I don't have any cookie from, from Azure. Like a brand new user. Okay. So I have to, def, to authenticate with my corporate account, as you can see and my corporate password. I don't keep it. I'm connected. Okay. So in few seconds, I connected my APM to as ready. There is one more option. Let me show you. I close this one and open a new one. This, what I did is SP initiated. I go directly to my application, sp.itc.demo. But if I want, I can use a, a web top. And Azure has a web top as a portal, application portal. So let me show you. I authenticate to Azure AD. As you can see, I have a no TP in that case. So on my phone, I have a notification and I will explain you why here I have a conditional access. And I arrive to my application. So I go to my tenant, my demo tenant is this one. And you can see 
the application. If I click on it, I'm connected. Okay, so you can notice I had an, a second file authentication, conditional access, because my demo tenant is connected to my corporate tenant. And in F5, we have a second file authentication. So if I has to connect, has to connect to my application, Microsoft.com, this one is linked to the corporate F5 tenant, so I have to authenticate with a second factor. But as you can see, I can use the Microsoft application portal as well to, to, go, to connect to my service provider. Easy.